Hey, happy corporate money making scam. I mean, Valentine's. What? It's not Valentine's anymore. Why did you delay me? Oh, I love me some vampires, I do. What is it about these creatures of the night that keeps us watching them over the years? The way the vampires have been seen and changed throughout history has been astonishing. From one of the first green vampires, Dracula, played by the legendary Bela Lugosi, to the point now where we have Edward, played by the legendary <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> the the legend <laughs> no sorry I I can't keep a straight face saying that yeah if you're looking for a fan of Twilight you've come to the wrong place yeah I'll direct you to the comment box so you can say how much of an ignorant douche I am anyway moving on this week's film is Let the White One In. If you want a vampire romance done correctly, look no further than this, as this is how it should be done. The story is about a young boy, Oscar, whose life is a living nightmare as he's constantly picked on at school and left as an outcast. He soon meets another outcast called Ely, and soon grow attached to one another as they realise they weren't alone after all. Okay, it's not as cheesy as I just summarised it there, but you get the idea. This is one of those special films which decides not to focus on actual events that take place, instead the focus is heavily put on the characters, particularly the relationship development between Oscar and Ely. This is interesting as the characters' personalities contrast against each other brilliantly. For example, Oscar is timid as doesn't speak up much due to the constant bullying, whereas Ely is a violent and outspoken girl because of the secluded life she has had to leave. Strangely enough, their own gender roles are kind of switched. Disclaimer. These are elements of stereotypes and not my own opinion of gender, so ladies, please chill. Now let me explain. Given the stereotypical elements given to either men and women, there are always elements that men or women are supposedly meant to behave in film. Looking at Oscar, the fact that he is being threatened by Minister when quit, has long blonde hair, and that he takes care of Ely when she is injured, these are elements that could be linked to the female gender. Whereas Ely, seen taking on physical tasks, has thick black hair, and defends Oscar when he is in distress, these are elements that could be linked to the male gender. So I find this a very clever part of the narrative, and very postmodern. I think this is done in order to show a different way in which relationships could be portrayed in cinema, where the gender roles are swapped, but subtly. The fact that the film chooses to focus on the relationship, rather than the idea that Ely is a vampire, is unique and very well done. No other vampire movie I've seen takes the idea of a supernatural relationship and actually tries to make it realistic, like this is something that could really happen. Seriously. Just. Leave. Along with the cinematography, which looks absolutely beautiful, capturing the mood so well of an outcast in a desolate modern world which our characters, fortunately, meet each other in. The strong use of white, black and red is a brilliant colour palette as they contrast against each other so well and represent the film's tone too. White, of course, symbolising purity and innocence, black symbolising the vivid and unknown, and red symbolising, well, blood, but also danger. If 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 I had to make one tiny little nitpick about this film, it's that the bullies themselves are one dimensional. They could have went into the argument of why they're bullies, why they choose to bully Oscar, not just because he's different. If they went into detail, say, about the family life or something like that, it could have been a little bit more interesting. But again, it's a nitpick. It's not destroying the entire film for me. It's just something that could have been tweaked. Oh, and another thing. It would be a little bit more interesting if we got to know more about Ely's backstory. It's kept in a mystery, so you don't really know what she's like, what she was like back then. But it would be interesting to know what she was like and what kind of people she got to meet. Hey, Ely, it's, uh, it's me again, leaving the number, message 50, yeah. Um, still calling about the hickey you gave me. It's, uh, it's starting to itch, and, well, something odd, my, my cat hates me now? I didn't think that, that's a thing, that you, that my cat would start to hate me, but he always hated you since he came, since you came out, I don't get that. Um, so yeah. I need to know if I need to go to the doctor or not. So, please.
please call me back. Uh, I don't. I I can't even go outside anymore. I'm not even sure if this is real. But please call me back and let me know. I'm gonna go feed Mr. Mittens as well. Last time he tried to claw my face off, but you know. Um. So please call me back, please. Now, in order to do this review any justice for the vampires, I shall read a quote from Bram Stoker's Dracula, because we need a little culture on this show. My friend, welcome to the Caprians. I am anxiously expecting you. Sleep well tonight. At free tomorrow, the diligence will start for Bukovina. A place on it is kept for you. At the Borgo Pass, my carriage will await you and will bring you to me. I trust that your journey from London has been a happy one, and that you will enjoy your stay in my beautiful land, your friend, Dracula. <coughs> ah, no, Mr. Benton, not the face, no!